These are some thoughts on the music industry and independent music publishing and getting together the essentials of it in 2023. It's not an end-all or no-all, just some ideas and some perspectives. So the first thing is you need Excel sheets or you need uh, spreadsheets. And the main one is going to be for your songs. And you're going to list your songs and you're going to list your codes that go along with your songs. And we'll get to what the codes are in a minute. Uh, another thing you're going to need is uh, publishing guides and publishing references and publishing ideas and marketing ideas. A big all-inclusive thing to help promote your song. Because really the more money you're going to put into promotion, the more money you're going to get back. Unless you have a really good connection. And their connection is another story. It's a whole, We'll get to that as well. But you have to have um, a lot of ideas and keep churning out things unless you're working with a publisher who's going to provide you those things. But really, we're talking about independent publishing. Now, let me clarify that. There is no such thing as truly independent publishing in the music industry uh, because you got to work with business networks to get those consistent residual results. And every, every road you're going to go down is going to lead to another network. And the network is really critical um, if you don't want to spend all day and night uh, you know, churning out uh, pieces of this and pieces of that to collect pieces. You want to get involved with these networks because they're going to do a lot of that work. And, but what it is is you're, as, since you're the publisher, you're going to get the publishing and the writer share because you're doing both. Uh, versus just selling off all your publishing. So what you want to try to do is hopefully have a middle ground where you have some publishers, but some of it is your so-called independent publishing. But again, really, there's no independence that's truly independence in the music industry because it's all about networks because we're talking about getting your music all around the world and you got to have networks to do that. There's no choice in this matter. It's very much like a protection racket, very much. So... Another thing you got to do is, of course, have a good PRO, and I have ASCAP, and it's been an awesome uh, experience having ASCAP as my PRO. Uh, they do a great job. They have been very like consistent over the years. It took a very long time to get going with them, but it's really helped me in a pinch over the years uh, to have them as a backup source uh, and to have a stable source as a backup with all the crazy change that's been going on. They're always involved in all the, uh, you know, getting involved with the new technologies, but it just takes a longer time because they have a much larger uh, repertoire and, and many more things to consider because they're, of course, a global company now. So they have their own embedded partnerships. So this is where you've got to network within them um, through, by the utilization of your material, not necessarily directly with their people, but just you're using their service means you're going to go all around the world now if you so choose. So you got to have a good PRO. And so that, that spreadsheet we talked about before with all your songs, that's going to get a, what's called a title code from your PRO. And that title code is like your barcode for your song. And they have an international one. And they have, um, you know, different versions of title codes to keep track of what's going on with particular pieces and, and alternate versions of that piece, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and, of course, the copyright is still alive and well. Your, your tracks are automatically copyrighted in the U.S. When you, make, when you create them, but you get a little more protection, essential protection, when you register them as well. This is something that the publishers would normally do for you, but if you do it yourself then you would want to consider registering them at the copyright office. And, and I'm not going to say how to do that because that's business advice. These are just thoughts of, of, of you know, what you could do to square the music industry in 2023. Okay, registrations are a big pain because right now with all these companies, you have all these places that, are, that need your song titles. So that means you got to port these material all over the place. Now, ideally, a place like Tune Registry would be able to do this, but unfortunately, they charge a fee, and um, it just—it's you really have to do a lot of additional registry entry at this point 
And so I'm not sure that using them is quite worth the, the, the time and the effort because you also have to register everything with them. And the, in each one of these registration companies, um, they do have generally ways to upload Excel sheets. So you got to consider how to format that spreadsheet uh, prior to, you know, the actual, uh, 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 including all the entries in it because it'll help simplify the process of porting material from places that need the, the two places that need your uh, data. So handler networks, that's going to be many things. That's, that's like your publisher or publishing administrator for international stuff. Uh, but you, you, you might want to consider having additional publishing aside from doing your independent uh, work because again, really without independent pub or without a, a supportive publishing network who's very deeply embedded, you're going to have a very, very, very difficult time getting your music into many different kinds of places, especially in 2023 when there is much more competition than there has ever been and there are things coming in left and right. Um, you know, to compete with music like AI. <clears throat> so what's interesting about Handler Networks is they will get income from so many different places and they have teams of people working to get this income through these companies. And what it is is they might have a large, uh, you know, pipeline of money and you're just going to take a very small percentage by having your material included in these Handler Networks. And they're just all over the place in terms of like, who they're connected with, for instance, uh, you know, who somebody's always owned by Sony or somebody's always owned by another company like Universal, and you know they have all these different names. But you got to get involved with these guys as well if you want to have a deeper, like let's say, syndication of your material, because it's going to be very difficult to get into these networks uh, independently. Very, very difficult unless you really want to spend all day on the phone. Um, and that's a whole different ball game. That's really a whole different person to have to do all that stuff. Okay, so then we register again with our sheets or our information to places like the Harry Fox Agency. They're going to collect a different kind of royalty. And then we got Sound Exchange, who's uh, collecting, I guess, different kinds of royalties from like satellite radios and things like that. So then we would have to register again with Sound Exchange. Okay, and then we have a new one on the block, which is called the MLC. And then this is another place, which is actually HFA supplied a lot of information to them uh, so that they could, uh, you know, have all the databases ready to go as they launched to collect their version of the uh, royalty and the copyright. So they're, they got information from HFA, and I have a feeling that they're kind of collecting a similar um a similar part of the the uh, copyright. So, but they're new on the new on the block, and I've I haven't really seen much action from them yet. Um, and it's not really a big uh, a big income stream because it's a, it's like a different kind of it's something about a mechanical license, from what I understand, with places like Harry Fox and uh, the MLC. And what it is is uh, that's because you're a publisher, you're collecting every little percentage that you can get. So back in the day, you also would need to register uh, material from a company called Nielsen BDS, which transitioned to uh, MediaBase. And so MediaBase is a place where you go to register your song so that it can be monitored on radio. So it's a very time-consuming process, obviously. If you have like four or 500 songs, maybe more, but if you're a, a music uh, for TV, you're going to have even more songs. So it's a lot of stuff to do, really. That's why it's a full-time job, plus all the changes all the time. So then we have Music Reports, which is another uh, version of the, collecting the uh, parts of the copyright. And it's another place you got to upload all this data and keep it up to date, et cetera, et cetera. But what it is is... Um, you're really not supposed to talk about HFA or uh, media base particular opportunities, but if you have your material in here, you will have access to some additional opportunities. Let's just put it that way. But as, as far as I've seen, um, nothing major for me because I'm a, just a small supplier at the moment for them. So the other major thing you need is a host. And you need a host 
so that they, they can uh, you know download your music as a WAV file and potentially use that music for various other things. It could be video games, it could be YouTube films, it could be synchronization for films. They could use your music for temp music and then come back to you and write, hey, we like this track, we want to use it in this movie, so what what's it going to cost, et cetera, et cetera. Now, they're not necessarily going to do that these days because it's just so highly competitive. And so what it is is the opposite. you got to promote your uh, hosting service to uh, lists and lists and lists of people uh, to uh, be able to have traffic to your, let's say, your portal so that they can then download and utilize your material in addition to whatever presence you have on places like YouTube or Spotify and streaming services. So this is, those are the essentials of being a, a so-called independent music publisher in 2023.